this well in the middle of a farm. Tapos may donkey who was walking in the farm, in the farmland. Nahulog siya sa well. And he started braying, di ba, ang donkey nag bray? Ah, ah, ah. Paano ba? Eh, ah, eh, ah. Galing, ah. Eventually, naki- narinig siya ng farmer. He saw that the donkey fell into a deep, the deep well. Sabi ng farmer, nako, I don't have the resources to pull him out of the well. I don't have the capability or the machinery or the manpower to pull him up. Pero sabi niya, kawawa naman siya eh. Mamamatay lang siya ng ganyan. Might as well speed up his demise so that talagang manahimik na siya. Tamang-tama, this farmer said, I, oh, I really plan naman talaga because it's a dead well. Wala na siyang water. Plano ko talaga na tabunan na talaga siya para magamit ng land. So, mercy killing, ginawa ng farmer, sige, he said, sige, sorry donkey, I'll have to bury you alive. <laughs> sorry, you know, morbid. Pero he started throwing dirt over the donkey. Throwing dirt, throwing dirt, throwing dirt. Para talaga matabunan siya and ma-seal off na yung well. After hours of doing that, napansin niya, para hindi pa namamatay yung donkey. Para he kept braying and braying and, and, and crying and crying. He looked inside the well, inside the hole. What he saw surprised and delighted him. Instead of the donkey accepting his fate and accepting the dirt thrown on him, what he did is if dirt fell on his shoulders, he'd shake it off. <laughs> he'd shake it off until the dirt falls to his feet and step up. Dirt, shake it off, it falls to his feet and he steps up. Dirt kept coming, he kept shaking, his, shaking it off, and he kept stepping up. Until finally, the dirt came up to the level of the ground, and he was able to easily step off of the hole. Galang, no? If something happens to your life, do you accept your fate? Sige, ako na. Ako na. Give me all the problems, give me all the frustrations. Ako na. Or do you say, I'm going to shake it off, throw it to the ground, and use it to go higher. I'm going to step up. So may all the frustrations you had in the past years, all the unanswered prayers, all the heartaches and heartbreaks, tell the person beside you and make that action. Shake it off. Dust it, throw it to the ground. And step up. Let that not break you, but may it blast you to higher and greater heights. Amen? This 2019, from now on, I want you to move from your comfort zone, from your coward zone, and from your complacent zone into your courage zone. Amen? It's time to start working for your goals. Step out of your comfort zone. Sino sa inyo, comfortable na ako eh. I don't have much in life, pero at least nakakanood ako ng telenovela. My wife was watching Korean movie kagabi. Yuck. Google ito, umiyak, sumisingot yung katabi ko na bangga kasi yung lead star. Sabi ko, parang fake lahat na mukha nila. Parang kikinis ng kutis nila. Galing na CGI. It's time, and I invite you to step out of your comfort zone starting tonight and start doing something. Start stepping also out of your, your coward zone. Some people, they don't want to aspire for anything because they're fearful. They want to say, hindi, okay lang, duwag ako eh. Dito na lang ako. I will not court that girl that I think is good for me because torpe ako or duwag ako. And some people, they don't want to go out of their complacent zone. Complacent, okay na ako dito eh. Tamad na ako, dito na lang ako. Tonight is the time that I will invite you to relocate zones. Start leaving your comfort your coward and your complacent zone and transfer to your courage zone. Because in your courage zone, you can be able to overcome anything life throws at you. Shake it off and step up. Reboot. Start fresh. Amen? So that we can truly declare this year that this is my year. Amen? Let's give it a round of applause. So let's begin. For the Courageous Obedience talk today, we're going to use a fantastic but very scary and weird story in the Bible. Hihimay-himay natin tong story to get three strategies that would help us out of our co- to get into our courage zone. 
we will learn how to go to get courageously obedient. So this is the story of Abraham and Isaac, how Abraham sacrificed his son, Isaac. Game? Tell the person beside you, I'm ready. I'm ready. We will read from Genesis, for, firstly, we will read from Genesis 22, verses 1 to 2. I'd like you to read with me together. Go. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He called to him, Abraham. And Abraham answered, yes, here I am. Take your son, God said, your only son, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. There on a mountain that I will show you, offer him as a sacrifice to me. Grabe. If you don't, if you don't remember your story, Abraham was the son that nakuha ni Abraham and ni Sarah, his wife, when they were very old. Matandaan sila when God gave them a son. So sobrang tagal na na pinagdasal, kala nila wala ng chance, binigyan sila ng anak, si, si Isaac. And so the Lord tells him, i-sacrifice mo anak mo. Patayin mo siya as a sacrifice to me. Grabe. Say grabe. <laughs> grabe, no? Parang, Lord, ano ba yan? Kabibigay mo lang eh. Ganun ba talaga si God? Abraham had every right to ask that. Wow, Lord, why are you like that? Controversial yung story. Pero also conflicting. I'll give you some insight. In the Old Testament, ayaw ni God ang human sacrifice. Kala natin, normal lang kay God yan. Ayaw niya. It says in Deuteronomy 12, let's read this verse. You must not worship the Lord your God in their way. Talking about the pagans. Because in worshiping their gods, they do all kinds of detestable things the Lord hates. They even burn their sons and daughters in the fire as sacrifices to their gods. So God did not like or did not approve of human sacrifice. But yung ginawa? Ba't yung pinapagawa kay Abraham to Isaac sa kanya? It, it, to give you a highlight on this or an, an, an example of this, there's this pagan god named Molech, and he was a, a stone, or sorry, a metal made god. Sa chan niya, meron fiery furnace. Ito itsura niya. Tapos, because there's a fiery furnace in his tummy, so, and he's made of metal, ang init ng, ng statue. So, anyone who touches the statue, masusunog ka talaga. So, mainit yung statue, but the pagans who worship him, would give their babies to his hands. And talagang sunog at patay yung baby. Grabe. Gruesome talaga. The worshippers would worship their god, the pagan god like that, by giving and throwing their babies to them. And they, their kids burn to death. To death. So God is against that. Against the gods uh, worship, as a killing or offering of human um, lives to worship him. So bakit si Isaac ginano ni God? Why did God say that or tell Abraham to do that to his son, the son that he gave him? We find that out in the very first line of the verse we read a while ago. Let's read the first line. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. That's why. God wanted to test Abraham. And that's the reason why he did this elaborate, dramatic story. We'll learn more later. Pero through this story, the author of Genesis was going to show and describe the tests that God also places in our lives. And I'm going to talk more about that next week. It's a talk number two. So tell the person beside you, attend talk two. Be ten eh. Okay, God bless. See you next week. Tanong. If God asks you to give up something or someone, will you obey him? Our Lord, bago ko mag-obey, paki-explain in three pages, notarized, documented proof. Bigat, no? If God in your heart told you, give up mo yan, give up mo siya, will you obey blindly without questions? Or will you ask Him why and ask Him and bargain with Him, wag na lang, Lord. Will you give blind obedience? Because Abraham gave God blind obedience, as we will learn later on. Will you obey? Will you trust that he has a reason for what he said? That he had a plan better than yours? That he sees something you don't? Or will you say, Lord, wag, gusto ko siya. 
Lord, wag, pinaghirapan ko to eh. Lord, I don't want to give this job up, even if it's eating my soul, even if I don't have time anymore for my family. I don't want to give that up. Lord, I don't want to give her up, even if she's causing me to sin, even if she's abusive and demeaning my personality, my manhood. I don't want to give her up. If God invites you to do something, are you going to obey blindly? Let's read on on how Abraham handled it. Abraham did. He said, yes, God, you said that. Even if it hurts, Abraham had feelings, I will. So he had, because Abraham had courageous obedience. Sino sa inyo nang humingi pa ng courage? Raise your hands. Gusto niyo rin ba ng courageous obedience? O hindi na? Hindi na, Lord. Will you blindly follow something God tells you to do? There's this, um, talking about obedience, there's a story. May isang preschool teacher who was teaching his five-year-old kids in the class about the Ten Commandments. He went to one by one, isa isang commandments. Alam niyo yung Ten Commandments? What are they? Ilan sila? <laughs> so he, when he went to the point of honor thy father and thy mother, nasa Ten Commandments yun, di ba? One of the kids, yung mga dalawang pilyong bata, yung pilyong batang number one, tinanong niya, um, honor thy father and thy mother. Sabi niya, teacher, honor thy father and thy mother. Galing. Teacher, meron ba sa Ten Commandments tungkol sa brother and sister? Kasi father and mother meron. Paano yung sa brothers, brother ko and sister ko? Sabi ng katabi niyang pilyo rin, meron sa Ten Commandments yan. Thou shall not kill. <laughs> Ganun sila. <laughs> So, obey. Say that. Obey. Tell the person beside you, obey. It's gonna be okay. I have three strategies to unpack before you as we go through the story on strategies on how to develop courage. Say that. On how to develop courage. Strategy number one. Take the first tiny step right away. I want you to say that. Take. That's what Abraham did. He did not ask questions. He just did it. And the key words there are right away. Continue the story. Let's read that. Early the next morning, after he got the call or the, the mandate from God, the, the instruction, Abraham cut some wood for the sacrifice. He loaded his donkey and took Isaac and the two servants with him. They set out, they started out for the place that God had told him about. God told Abraham, sacrifice your son in this mountain, in this altar. So the next day, kinabukasan, hindi umabot ng one week ng deliberation, ng debating, ng negotiation. He got a call from God, and he knew it was God. He said, sige Lord, the next day he did it. I'm so sure that he was heartbroken when he did that. That he was confused. With God, si God ba to? Baka naman iba yung napakinggan ko. Baka naman parang globe signal na medyo na nagkagulok kahapon dahil sa Nazareno procession. Is that the right? But I'm sure he had those feelings, but he still obeyed. He defied, this defied his knowledge of God because he knew God to be loving. He even told, he even knew that God said, you will be the father of many nations. Why are you killing my heir? Di ba many nations, mga anak? Ba't yung anak ko, pinapatayin mo? And still he obeyed. Still he said, tara, let's go. Let's do God's will. He obeyed instantly. His tiwala was overruled. His tiwala, he did not allow his tiwala to get overruled by his tanongs. He just said, Lord, sige, you said so, I will do it. Early the next morning, they started out for, of that place. Has God asked you to do something? Is there something that God asked you to do last year, two years ago, that you've been saying, hmm, si Lord, kabayan, tama ba yung signal? Fiber ba to Lord, parang choppy. Has the Lord asked you to do something? To love someone, a relative that is unlovable? To do a dream that you think is for you, who, which you are built for, but you're saying, mm, baka hindi, hindi pa yan. Then let this message touch your heart. 
and invite you to do it right away. Confused Karen with the message, with the plan, like Abraham? If so, my advice, like Abraham, is to just start. Just take the first step. Just take the tiny step, despite not knowing where or why. You don't have to know. Let's read that. You don't have to know how the story will end. Just know that God will be with you till the end. If you trust the God or the guide who says, go here, do that. You might not know, Lord, san patay pupunta? San ba mag end up? You don't have to know that. You have to say, Sige, Lord, I trust you. I might not know, see the future, but you see my future. I may not make, it may not make sense now, but with God as my tour guide, I will trust. He sees the whole 2019. And in multiple times of this year, the Lord tells you, do this. My advice, take that step right away and allow God to move you towards that. Agad, agad. Stop overanalyzing. Ladies, raise your hands. I just told you to raise your hands. My wife and I, most of you know, we, we got our first dream home, or our first home last year. We moved in October 1 of 2018. 17 years married. We've been renting all those years. Tapon yung pera. It didn't go to any investment. It was a rent. It took us 17 years before we, of analyzing, of questioning, toto ba to? To just finally say, sige nga, let's step out in faith. Let's take a leap of faith. Sige nga, try natin. Let's inquire. Let's try and see our, our worth. Kung kaya ba natin. And finally, that year, which, was, which started a year before 2017 and spilled over because it's a year of preparation, we got our dream home, our dream place. So ang tanong ko sa inyo, and I want to challenge you, are you overanalyzing everything that you hear from God? Because there may be time, kaya nga leap of faith eh, that God will tell you, that leap, just start. Trust that He's there to catch you when you do. Use the law of momentum. Say momentum. The law of momentum is simple. You take one step, mahirap, di ba? It's so hard to take that first step. Mag-diet, ang hirap, no? Grabe. Hirap mag-exercise. That first step is the hardest. But when you take one step, you're already leaning this way. So the second step is a lot easier kasi nandito ka na eh. And third, and fourth, and fifth. That first step is the hardest. But when you take that first step, right away, the momentum leads you towards there. Sino sa nyo may health goal this year? Raise your hands. Six-pack abs like me? Ako five-pack lang goal ko eh. Hindi pantay, pero... That's the hardest of all. One of the hardest. And we're going to do something later on. A practical exercise. Not exercise, but practical thing. Take one step and let that one step propel you to the next step. Let the momentum of your movement move you towards that. To the point, nang hirap na tumigil kasi nakaginto ka na eh. Pag tumigil, mas mahirap na ngayon. Mas madali na tumuloy. That's momentum. And use that. One time in 2004, I tried a diet. It was working, nakailang weeks ako. Biglang someone told me, alam mo, hindi healthy yung diet na yan. Okay na eh. Ang ganda na ng progress ko. Ginagawa ko na biglang sabi, hindi healthy. Oo nga, no? Sige, tigil ko na. Akan yung pizza. Sometimes when someone breaks your momentum, mahirap bumalik ulit. So my advice is just take one step right away. If God tells you to do that, do that. God tells you take dates with your wife, take a date with your wife and do it. Kahit, kahit noong una, hindi pa kayo nagkaka tinginan sa mata, kahit nasa phone kayo during the dinner, do it. Do it again next week until it's a momentum and you start talking to one another again. Start being more loving, etc. Gain momentum, take courage one step at a time. That's strategy number one. Strategy number two, let's read this. Focus on the why, not the how. What's your why? Ano yung why mo ginagawa isang bagay? What's your deepest why? We all know this. In sales talks, we hear that. In motivation speakers, we hear, go for your why. Why do it? Because that's stronger and that'll propel you. 
Let's hear and see Abraham's why. Together, let's read this. On the third day, Abraham saw the place in the distance. Then he said to the servants, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there and worship, and then we will come back to you. May napansin kayo sa story niyan? Kakaiba, no? You notice a word that is kind of misplaced? Basahin natin ulit. On the third day, Abraham saw the place in the distance. Then he said to the servants, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there and worship, and then we will come back to you. He did not say, I will come back to you. He said, we. Eh, di ba, you're going to sacrifice Isaac. Dapat may iwan or mawawala na si Isaac sa lupalop ng Pilipinas, sa ng mundo. But he said, we. So, ibig sabihin, Abraham knew that God would make a way that Isaac would be safe. In his heart, he said, I'm going to do your will, Lord. Kat, it's ridiculously crazy. Kat, labag sa puso ko. Because I know that you're good and that something will happen. I will obey. Even if, if it's funny and courageous and, and, and whack. Because Abraham knew either his son would be killed and the Lord would resurrect Isaac or the Lord will, do the, will stop him from killing his son. Abraham had a why and that propelled him to do it. Abraham did not know how Paano gagawin ni Lord? Sabi niya, papatayin ko yung anak ko eh. Ano, papatayin ko tapos hindi pala tatalab? He did not know how, but he knew why. I'm doing this because God told me to do it. God told me to obey. And I know my God to be a good God. That He will not ask me to sacrifice something if it was not for His good and mine. So my why is clear, Abraham said. My how, I don't know why. I don't know how. But my why is clear. He knew that something good, let's see that, will happen because God is good. In your life right now, there is something unexplainable that even you can't explain. Some of you have been serving, like me, for most of your life. Some of you, bago pa lang. And some of you said, Lord, kung kailan pa ako nag-serve, kung kailan pa ako nag-attend ng feast, but itong problema dumating sa buhay ko. We question God and it's okay. But at the end of the day, we obey because we know God is good. And that something good will come out of whatever we're experiencing. So in your own case, trust that He has a better plan, that He has your good in mind, and still obey and do what He tells you to do because that's how He'll make His plan come and make sense. The why comes before the how. That's what Abraham experienced. How? I don't know how God will spare my son, but why? He told me to. I will do it. Because what keeps you fearful is when you fuss over the how. Lord, paano mo heal yung nanay ko? I don't know. Lord, paano mo papagalingin yung situation ko? I don't know. Because I can't see it. Lord, how will you help me in this? How will you help me in that? Stop worrying on the how. And start focusing on the why. To be brave, to be courageous, you need to focus on why you're going to continue doing it. Why you're going to work for your dream. Why you're going to pursue your fitness goal. Why you're going to love. Focus on your why. And that the how takes care of itself. You need to focus on the why because you know God is good. And He wants everything to work for your good. My career is, 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 is a mess, actually. I started as a civil engineer. I start, well, I started as a full-time worker, a servant in the Lord. I eventually applied my civil engineering course. I became a civil engineer. Then someone recruited me to a network marketing career. So I left a very promising civil engineering career to go into network marketing. I did not succeed there, but I started going to different sales jobs. Ang labo ng career ko. As in, ang dami ko na try. Insurance sales, real estate sales, beauty product sales, pampaputi ng kilikili sales, supplement sales, website development sales, heavy equipment sales. And all through that, I've been asking God, Lord, bakit ako nawala sa landas ko? Sana pala tinuloy ko na lang yung civil engineering degree ko. All my classmates are now contractors. 
I could have gone there, that, and I could have reached success like them. But I, I said, Sige, Lord, I don't know how. I would trust why, that you are with me, that you see a better path for me. And so eventually I found, as you know, a business, a product that I love selling, and it succeeded in that, and eventually created a company out of that, which I now am president of, and which we lead. So it all made sense later on, as is in your life, if it'll make sense. Sometimes we ask, Lord, nagka-detour yung buhay ko? I was supposed to go this way. Pero dito ako napunta. How can I ever end up in the right path? I love it that God is like ways. May recalculation. He can still get you to your destination because He can recalculate a new path. Hindi pa huli. Detours are okay because He can recalculate your route to still get you to the best for your life. Amen? Let's give a little round of applause. Trust God's ways. Trust His ways. Have a big dream. Let's continue. Have a big dream. If you have a big dream and it's scary, let that propel you and give you your why. If you have a big dream and you don't know how you're going to do it, if your why is big enough, you will be able to do it. If the why is big enough, the how will follow. Amen? So check your 2019 dreams. Why do you want to get those dreams? Ask yourself. Why do I want to lose weight? Why do I want to attain my financial goal? Why do I want to have my dream house? Why do I want to be better my relationship with my parents? Why do I want my faith to grow this year? Why do you want those dreams? Check the whys. Find your why for these dreams and let that why propel you to start acting and do it right away. Take courage and do it. Amen? Strategy number three. Let's read this. The final strategy. Let's read it together. Believe that you're the miracle you're praying for. That's our one big message. You're the miracle you've been praying for. It says in this verse, let's continue the verse, the Bible verse of, of Isaac and Abraham. Abraham made Isaac carry the wood for the sacrifice. And he himself carried a knife and live coals for starting the fire. As they walked along together, Isaac spoke up. Father, he asked. Yes, my son. Isaac asked. I see that you have the coals and the wood. But where's the lamb for the sacrifice? Kailangan nga manaman, ano? Abraham answered. God himself will provide one. And the two of them walked on together. If you know your story, Abraham was the lamb. The sacrifice that did not bring from home to the sacrifice altar was because he was the one to be sacrificed. At nagulat na si Isaac, nalinalagay na siya dun sa altar to be killed. So the story we will continue, that story will continue next week. Bitin, no? Talagang ganun eh. So you have to come. But the story is beautiful there. Isaac saw that, they had the, saw that they had the preparation materials. They had the wood. They had the fire. They had the lighter. Nagbabape sila kami. Walang lighter. They had the coal, etc. Pero kulang yung main sacrifice. Until later on, he found out that siya pala ang sacrifice. Siya pala ang gagamitin. Put your hands over your chest. Ako pala. Stop looking for the perfect condition to start getting your dreams. Stop looking for the perfect person to start getting your dreams. Ikaw pala. Nasa yun na eh. You have what it takes to do it. You have what it takes to be the sacrifice for your dreams to be fulfilled. If a lot of people say, Lord, I want a sign so that I can start doing this, so I can start doing that. Well, I love saying this. This is the sign. Tonight is the sign. If you're saying, Lord, kailangan ko ng sign. Sige, bigyan mo ang sign para gawin ko to. Ito na yon. Sign. This is the sign. You don't have to wait for signs. You should start doing it. You have all you need. Ikaw na eh. You have the joy you need. You have the peace. You have the skills. You have the basic steps to take the first step. You don't have to know the skills to take the last, last step. That's why it's a step-by-step -step thing. God supplies it as you go along. Some people can say they have to study so much. For example, you want to put a business, put up a business. Kailangan alam ko na lahat, Lord, bago ako mag-start. Sometimes the Lord says, no, take that first step. 
will teach you along the way. Because if you wait until makompleto mo, mawala na yung energy mo and yung momentum mo and yung why. You're the answer to your own prayer. Say that. So stop waiting. Start working for that dream. Tonight, January 10, 2019, is the night that you will say, I started tonight. And December of this year, I will say, Buti na lang nakinig ako sa speaker. Kasi be- I got this now because I started that night. Don't say, ne, bukas na lang. The next week, bitin eh, malalama ko next week. No, start tonight. This is exactly what you need. Sometimes we wait for things to happen so we can start making things happen. But I just want to give you that message tonight. Start. Make it happen now. Start making 2019 your year. Because the one big message that I leave you with tonight is you're the miracle you have been praying for. You don't have to go elsewhere. You don't have to wait for someone. You're that someone. You have what it takes. I'd like to leave you with a practical guide to help you with your dream for the year. Okay lang? Who wants to really make 2019 their most victorious year ever? Raise your hands. To make now, wow, of all the years in my life, 2019 was one of the best. I got the, the love of my life. I got the dream career, the dream income, etc. The funny thing is, a lot of people start the year with a New Year's resolution. Alam niyo ba yung batting average na New Year's resolution? Hindi naman zero. There was a study conducted in the U.S. that those who made New Year's resolutions, of all of them, 9.2% lang ang natupad ang New Year's resolution nila. Hindi mo lang 10%. Ano? 9.2, wow, that's very low. Less than 10%. So people tend to blame themselves. Sino sa inyo ganon? Magaling ang simula, magaling ang sige. Habang umiinom sa New Year's, sige, gagawin ko yan. January 1, ginawa. Nag-gym. January 2, wala na. Batting average, yes. You're with the, you're, you're with the 90 point, mathematicians, 90.8. Tama ba? Yun. Others, they blame themselves, hindi ko nakahit yung goal ko dahil sa akin, dahil kulang ako, dahil I'm not enough, that I needed someone to help me, that I needed a sign. But I want to give you a new angle. The problem isn't you. The problem for not getting your goals in the past isn't you. The problem is your system. Huh? You have what it takes. You have what it takes. It's already there. God is with you. And God is here to guide you. You're the miracle you've been waiting for. It's just the systems that you need to put in place that spells the difference. I'll expound later on. James Clear says, you don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Having goals is great. We, started, we ended last year with the G series, Gift, Goals, and Grit. Goals was part of that talk. We all made goals. Having goals is good, but you need systems to make that goal happen. You have to set up daily activities to get your goal and make it happen. If you don't have systems in place, you fall to the level of your systems. If you system, you fall. Hindi dependent sa goal ang success mo. It depends on how you will achieve that goal. Solid systems spell success. I'll expound later on. So after discovering your why, now it's time to plot your how. Sige Lord, my goal for my family this year is to be able to buy or move towards buying our dream house. Why? That's powerful. But how do I do it? The Lord, ang goal ko for this year is to pray about it. You got to put up systems. You got to set it up. You got Having goals is great. Having grit is greater because you have the ability and the attitude to do it. But how to do it is dependent on the systems you will put in place. The reason why resolutions fail is simple. We rely on bursts of motivation and inspiration to carry our behavior changes. But that doesn't sustain you. 
lot of people inspired sila sa Facebook, sa Pinterest, when they see a very powerful quote. Wow, I'm inspired to do that. Galeng. Pero hanggang inspiration lang yon. It won't help you continue. It will inspire you. It will delight you. But you need to put systems. You know what will help you get your goals? Ask me what? Habits. Say habits. Creating habits, daily habits, will help you get your goals. Craig Rochelle, one of my Lodi preachers, said this. You have to create habits because habits matter. He said this. Successful people do consistently what other people do occasionally. You got to create habits in your life that will get you towards your goals. You have to start going to the gym if you want to lose weight. You can't say, Lord, gusto ko pumayat. Next day, Lord, gusto ko pumayat. Thy word, Lord, papayatin mo na ako. You got to go to the gym, a habit, every day to get it. You got to create systems, create habits daily, say daily, and you got to make that first step to help the miracle of you reach your goals. Example, if your goal is to lose weight, what's the habit? Pray, um, baklara kneeling, so you get that. You got to go to the gym every five days a week. You got to lessen your caloric, cal caloric intake. You got to create habits to get your goals running. If your goal is, I want to read more. Nyari, napaka big ng goal mo. This year, gusto ko magbasa ng maraming libro. Your habit is, every day, I will read one chapter of a book. Habits. If your goal is, I want to get promoted. What's your habit? Every day, I will go early and I will leave late and work 10% more. If you're a salesperson, I will call 10% more clients. I'll go on 10% more calls. You got to make it a daily habit to get it. Get my meaning? Hirap, no? Wag na lang, ano? <laughs> Mas madali magpray, ano? <laughs> but if you pray and you don't do anything, every year, 2020, we'll be having this same talk. You got to start doing something. Take that first step, propelled by your why, and saying, yes, I have what it takes. And now I'm getting, I'm ready to do it. You need practical daily habits that you will stick to. And I, and I give you a tip. If you fall in your habit, if you don't do it one day, don't give up. A lot of people, ang ganda ng start. Uy, nag-workout, nag-IF ako, nag-intermittent fasting. One month, I ate in the 16-8 window. Hindi ako kumain ng 16 hours. I ate only the 8 hours. Pero isang kainan ng barkada, I ate a lot. And because of that, ayoko na. Sige, balik sa dati it's okay to fall. Parang buhay. But it matters more that you get back up and continue the habit the day after. So continue planting. To end, I want to summarize those three strategies in these three words. Number one, you gotta start. Say start. Take that first step right away. Number two, you need significance. To find a significance, say significance. You got to focus on your why. Why should I do this? Why should I lose weight? Why should I love more? Why should I attend the feast more? Why? And number three, you need to put up systems. Say systems. You know that you have what it takes, so now it's up to you to create something in your life, a habit to continue. Last May of last year, I started my intermittent fasting habit, goal. Sabi ko, lumalaki na ako. Just to be honest about it, I reached... 2XL, shirt size, last year. I started IF because a cousin of mine said, pumayat talaga siya. By intermittent fasting, if you don't know about it, Google it. But it's a way of eating. He lost a lot of weight. Talagang pumayat siya. So I started asking about it. So ang ginawa ko, when I learned about it May, I said, sige, I'll start. I started in May. I didn't say, sige, pag-aralan ko ng gusto, I will calculate and analyze and study it well because if I do that, hindi ako magsustart. Ma-overall ako. Huwag na lang. Hirap pala. Sasacrifice ko pala yung kainan ko. Okay? That's why you have to start. Second, I found my why. My wife and I, we have been 17 years married but we don't have kids. So I realized, wala mag-aalaga sa amin kung kami. So I said, I want to be healthy not just to look good which is not hard 
but, but I, I <laughs> five pack. Thank you, birthday. Next week, encourage. <laughs> the courage to say that, grabe. It's in my heart. <laughs> Again, sidetrack. I wanted my wife to be, because I wanted to live long, and I wanted to live healthy. Kami mag-aalaga sa sarili namin. I want to build feasts all my life. I want to build this feast continually for the rest of my life, and with you build more feasts. So my why is I want to be healthy. Not just looking good, slim, but to be healthy. I found my why, my significance. And I needed the third thing, which is significant, uh, which is systems. And so I started saying, what will I do? I will start the 16 8 process of the intermittent fasting. I will fast for 16 hours and eat in the window of 8 hours. And through that, when I started, I lost ilang pounds na. <laughs> From 2XL na wala na ako ng isang X. Hindi X girlfriend, but X. I lost one pant size. So new pants, nakabili na rin ako. It's still a process. Again, I, I, I will report to you regularly. And I have a new goal, and that's to add fitness and workouts to my diet. So that's the next goal for this year. If you have a goal, I invite you to do these three things. Start agad. Is your goal to love God more? Start agad. Attend the feast more. Is your goal to start loving your family, your very unlovable family? Start know why and put up systems if it's a family thing set up monthly meetups even if nag-aaway rin lang kayo sa meetups so okay lang yan eventually you will love love will flow and they will see something in you if your goal is a financial goal start know why and start planning it out every day I'm gonna do this when I wake up I'm gonna call this person I'm gonna do this this is what you need to make 2019 your biggest year ever and your most victorious year ever. Amen? Let's do it tonight. Take your phones out. I want to be practical. Go open the notes section of your phone. You know what the notes section is? Those who don't have a phone. And write three things in your phone tonight. Right? Let's see that. The top three goals for 2019. Wait, Mona. Look, at, look here, look here. Don't write a goal that you won't get within the year.